Imagine Dan McGinnis. Imagination is the preview of life's coming attractions. Imagination is the preview of life's coming attractions. Madam Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests, have you been to Disneyland? Yes. Think about this. Before you ever went the first time, how many times did you imagine what Disneyland would really be like? Days, weeks, even months before you ever got there. Walt Disney was great at imagining because he applied for a loan 300 times before he had success in borrowing money to build the Magic Kingdom. Albert Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. When we are persistent with our imagining of our goals, they will come to fruition. I'll share with you one example. When my son was three years old, we lived in Columbus, Ohio. On a Friday afternoon, as I was on my way home from work, I stopped at the grocery store and picked up groceries. When I got to the front door with groceries in both arms, the door was locked. We didn't keep the door locked during the day. Imagine how I felt. And then there was a note that read, I love you, but I have to get away and get what? I got inside and all of my son's toys were still there. Most of his clothes were there. But my wife and my son were gone. The next day a letter came from an attorney said there was going to be a divorce. On Monday, I called the attorney and I explained to her, you don't, you don't understand, my wife loves me. The attorney said, Mr. McGinnis, you don't understand. Your wife is divorcing you and you're going to pay for it. <laughs> well, a couple of days later, I got myself a second job. Four nights a week, I delivered pizzas to help pay for this attorney. And then I got myself an attorney. I explained to the attorney, I believe I could be the better parent in providing for my son's welfare. My attorney said, let her have him. If she's like you say she is, she'll give him back. That didn't make sense to me. I got a third job, three nights a week after delivering pizzas until 11.30 at night. I was a janitor in Columbus, Ohio. I cleaned two banks from 11.30 at night till 2.30 in the morning. Several weeks later, a letter came in the mail that said the divorce is final. She gets custody. You get two weeks visitation in the summertime. Imagine not being able to see your child who's over a thousand miles away in Colorado, but two weeks out of the year for the next 15 years, ladies and gentlemen. Some time went by and I met this remarkable lady Shortly after that, I asked her to marry me. Every day my wife would say to me, we're going to get Troy back. We're going to get Troy back. We're going to get Troy back. And every day I would imagine that little brown-eyed boy and I playing ball together. He had this red bat and he could hit the ball farther than anyone in the world, in his mind. <laughs> he had this big wheel, he rubbed this big wheel so fast down to the end of the wall and he slid it around until he wore holes in the tires on that big wheel. And then, after over a year, unbeknownst to me, my former wife had called my sister in Denver and spoken with her twice. My sister was a phenomenal lady. She was the most powerful negotiator on the face of the earth. The only problem was she, she thought my name had two syllables. Instead of Dan, she thought it was Dan. <laughs> she would say, Dan. Surprisingly to me, she called me and said, Dan. 
listen very closely to your instructions. Go get custody papers drawn up with your name on it. Get a round trip plane ticket, one way plane ticket. Bring $300 cash and be in the Denver airport tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Oh my God, imagine how I felt then. As I walked through the Denver airport the next day looking for Troy. Imagine, what would he look like? Imagine how would he accept me. And I saw him. I think that's him. But he's just standing there with his hands down at his side, looking straight ahead. He's not coming, he's not moving. Then he began walking, running. He leaped in the air and wrapped his arms and legs and hands and feet around me and held on in silence. We went to my sister's and spent the night. The next day we flew home to Columbus, Ohio. The airline pilot had heard of our story and declared that we would be the first one to exit the plane even before first class. In those days, airplanes were like Air Force One. They pushed the step up to the plane, opened the door. I held Troy's hand. We stepped from the first step. I looked down on the tarmac. I saw my mother and my wife. As I waved to them, I realized my family was together again. A couple hours later, Troy came up to me and said, I'm afraid of that woman. She's got spots on her face. I explained to him she had red hair, and those spots were freckles. <laughs> and they wouldn't harm him in any way. A year later, we moved to Phoenix, Arizona. And during that first week here, I took my wife and my son for their first visit ever to Disneyland. Troy grew up, went to school, graduated, got a job, got married, and gave us a gift, two gifts, Nicole McGinnis and Katrina McGinnis. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I challenge you, I beseech you, I implore you, whatever it is that you want that's bigger and better and greater, imagine it, imagine it, imagine it, and remember, imagination is a preview of life's coming attractions. <coughs> Madam Congress.